Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at FreeDS, a free Nintendo DS emulator on Android. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, to level set with you here, I don't recommend FreeDS at all. I don't like this emulator. I don't think it's very good, but a lot of people have been asking about it. It's a very popular emulator, and that's because it's free. In my opinion here, Drastic is the way to go for Nintendo DS emulation on Android, or you can try the RetroArch route. But if you are looking for something easy and free, well, I guess you can give this one a shot. Now, when you first open FreeDS, it'll ask you for permission to two different things. One for your file system, which you say yes so it can read your ROMs. The second one here is for your audio. You can say yes or you can say no, it's up to you. Next, it'll ask you to select a menu style. I do prefer radial and it's kind of the exact same as drastic. If you declined access to the microphone, it will give you an annoying alert that looks just like this. Feel free to ignore it because eventually it will let you know the microphone is now emulated only. Once you've gone through that initial setup, here is the main screen for the app. You can see an advertisement on the bottom and to get away from that, just put the phone in airplane mode. Uh, but from here, just go into options. The first set of settings here are the display settings. If you have a high power device, maybe you've got a brand new phone, maybe it's like an S21. I think even an S10 can probably get away with this. I have a Google Pixel 5 and I can turn frame skip to off. Now, if you have a lower power device or an older device, maybe just keep frame skip set to auto. If you're noticing some slowdowns in games and you have frame skip set to auto, you can bump the frame skip value up. Maybe put it up a little bit. By default, it's set to four. Uh, the fast forward maximum speed is 200%. You don't really need to change this. The screen filter here is set to linear. You can change this to change up the visual effects in game. There are five options total here, which is a little bit less than drastic. You can try something out like scale 2X and just see how it goes. These are just a matter of personal preference. Other than that, the last settings I'd recommend taking a look at here are the set functions for quick button one, two, and three. There are some interesting options here. The special button can be used for things like fast forward, quick save, quick load, swap top and bottom screens, swap one and two screen layouts, show hide virtual buttons, and things like simulate microphone noise. So if you disallowed this from accessing your microphone, well, you can just simulate that with the press of a button. In terms of configuring things here, that's really about it. Feel free to load up a game. To do that, just hit new game. If you're still connected to the internet at this point, you'll be greeted with an ad. After that ad plays, you'll get this notice here. It says ROMless not found. This app will automatically scan your phone to find some games, so just hit OK. Now, once it finds your games, feel free to select what you want to play and you're pretty much off to the races. With this emulator, sometimes a game won't load up correctly. Just close the emulator, open it up, and try to load that game again. It might load correctly the second or even the third time. Sometimes opening a game completely crashes this emulator as well. In which case, I guess just open it up again and try to load the game again. Now, I don't necessarily recommend playing this in landscape mode because the screens do get a little bit messed up. Some games look absolutely fine. Some games, well, not so much. If you press the menu button on the bottom center of the screen, it will bring up this circle menu. And there are a few handy options here. You can click swap to swap your screens around or you can click menu to bring up even more options. In the menu settings, you have load, save, manage your save states, add cheats, reset game, or change game. If you click change game, this will exit out of the game and bring you back to the main menu. You can also change your screen and gamepad layout here if you want. Here's an example of an instance where you should reload your game. If you're playing a game and this is what you end up seeing. Just close the emulator and reboot it and this should fix itself. So here's a quick view of Dragon Ball Origins. You can see the game is up and running and running well. There's no real screen tearing. There's no real jittering. Everything is running fairly smoothly. Now this might not be the case for all games out there and definitely won't be the case for all phones out there. Your mileage may vary when it comes to game compatibility as well as phone compatibility. So just be patient. One thing this app is good for though is determining whether or not you can play Nintendo DS games on your phone. And that's all I'd really recommend FreeDS for. There's a better alternative out there and that's Drastic. Although Drastic does cost you a few bucks, 
This is free and that's going to be tempting to a lot of people. If you play a lot of DS games, your phone can handle DS games, then I would recommend that jump to Drastic. The emulator works better, there are more options, and all around it's just a better experience. But if you are dead set on using FreeDS emulator, I do recommend putting your phone into airplane mode before you use the app. That way you don't really have to worry about advertisements except what's baked into the emulator. And on top of that, it'll give you a better experience overall. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on FreeDS in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.